Okay, we're on to our last pin here and be the last pin of crossbred guild. So these would all be litter mates. Uh, uh, ten litters be backdrops, nasty words, better man, the sow that uh, uh, we own with Austin and Bree and, and done a good job uh, for sure. Had the marsh bear last year that uh, won a lot in the summer and then uh, recently has uh, her last litter uh, raised the board that uh, we call director cuts there at upper hand. Uh, sired by backdrop there at Moyers and uh, the cob bread boar that sure had a nice summer and, and pigs look good for sure. I think we've got three gilts here that uh, all a little bit different in their types and kinds and probably different endpoints and that's what uh, makes it interesting. We'll start with lot 28. This would be 10-5. Uh, this 10-5 gilt is, is probably the one that's uh, the smallest in the litter but man she's got some very very unique pieces in terms of her head and neck, her design. She balances up tremendously good. For one that that, that neat neck and a little more immature she's giant legged her pastern sets good and one that we think uh, could push and, and make uh, make the kind of big one that uh, that it takes there at the end because she's really opened up underneath in terms of squareness she's heavy structured tail sets good we think this guilt can be awfully awfully good uh, all summer long and, and last to that march setting we don't think without any kind of question and be a very competitive big one but one that uh, you could show often and early at the same point in time lot 29 is 10-6 this gilt here is the one that's uh, uh, the really, really flashy on the side profile. We think kind of the feeding kind in terms of one that's, uh, uh, that uh, you can push on and, and, and burly her up. Uh, you know, once she relaxes a little bit and, and gets more comfortable off both ends of her skeleton, we think uh, her angles read right. She just needs to set in a little bit better because her head and neck's good. She's got a really square, useful hind leg. She's level. She's correct. Her proportions are good. She's not too long bodied. We think a gilt that once she chubs up and, and she hits that, uh, she hits that mature weight at uh, 280 or bigger. Uh, market guilt, breeding guilt, do what you want to do. We think that that one there can be uh, very competitive. She gives it an awesome look on the side and, and still one that everything matches in terms of proportions on that particular hog. Lot 30 is our final guild and one that's uh, as burly as anything in this 10 litter. This is 10-7. Uh, she offers a pile of muscle, a pile of bone, uh, a gilt that's uh, huge about the center part of her body. Angle and setup fronts right in terms of uh, mobility on the side profile. We think a gilt that, as I talked earlier, this gilt could fit a, if you have a market setting, if you have a breeding setting, do what you want to do. We think there's some breeding value as well as terms of cash in or, or if a guy wants to make that one a sow, we think she's got some barrel making ability and always had. She's one that stuck out uh, uh, for a long time in terms of being that power gilt, but one that's uh, right proportion of body. She's got good length of neck for one that that's burly and stout and uh, still very, very mobile off, off both ends of her skeleton. So we think a, a great way to end our sale. Three different kinds of gilts, different endpoints. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Austin or myself or, uh, or make an appointment, stop by and look at them or just give us a call or text and we can visit. Thanks a lot.